I'm here to talk about participatory and citizen science, which are two very closely related scientific methods that um, are very value aligned and I think also um, quite productive towards open research and open science. And I'm here with um, some citizen scientists who are working with me on the project, um, Suzanne Iwai, Otis Smith and Sarah Markham. They're all fantastic contributors, they're all autistic, and they're going to talk to you in more detail about their experiences and areas of expertise. So just to go through some very um, brief explanations, citizen science basically involves any science in which um, people who are non-professional scientists take part. Many of you may be familiar with Zooniverse or open source funding. These are ones that target very particular parts of the research cycle. Um, participatory science is in many respects a more stringent requirement. It means that the people for whom there is most at stake in the research um, are involved in empowered positions and direct direction setting positions. So not just consulted and not just doing some part of the process without knowing why they have to be informed and they have to be able to direct it. Um, I think this is really important for breaking down the boundary between the knower and the known. Um, and as Sarah will talk about later, there are some really good reasons why we need to be very careful as researchers and scientists about um, thinking we know more than we do and not listening to the subjects of our research. Um, as I said before, all of these methods go together. So I'm working on building a citizen science project currently, which has been co-created with members of the autistic community to investigate sensory processing and autism, the participatory research aspect brings autistic people in at every stage of the research process from, um, so it started with a Jane Blind Alliance setting, a priority setting exercise, which consulted more than a thousand autistic people about what questions um, needed to be answered by autism research. Citizen science allows it to be scaled um, and reach more people. So a citizen science platform means that it's not as intensive in terms of one-to-one -one research or time and open source development is a wonderful way of um, creating the transparency that you need for participatory science to be meaningful as well as um, as we've been discussing before um, in this session um, it allows you to collaborate with all of these incredible experts around the world who can give you their experience too um, so now uh, dr sarah markham who is a researcher herself as well as um, having lived experience with autism is going to talk about why participatory science um, is important in relation to heuristics in autism research. So over to you, Sarah. Do we have Sarah here? Sarah Markham. You do now. I was mute. I was muted. Ah, okay, that solves the mystery. All right. Yes. Well, it's it's quite ironic that the word heuristic is in the title when research has shown that autistic people themselves are less susceptible to many of the biases that um, more neurotypical people uh, are culpable of. But, but back to the presentation in hand, um, yes, changing approaches to autism research. It's gone from, you know, viewing, you know, the, the, uh, the autistic person uh, by the little professor model of Hans Asperger. We've progressed onto the autistic spectrum, looking at a multi-dimensional approach to autism and then well now we have the autism constellation model which kind of looks like a, a crossover between a woodwork project and string theory where you can look at those dimensions being curled up and perhaps sometimes unfurling and um and then curling up again but the exciting thing about participatory science is that it's a form of action research where the people the subjects themselves are in a way actually doing the science and setting the protocols and changing the protocols. They're doing the versioning themselves um, as they progress through the scientific journey. So we're kind of experiencing a paradigm shift um, by this participatory science approach. 
It's a way of challenging conventional static means of conducting science. It's making it a more agile, adaptive, um, evolutionary approach. Um, and it kind of will hopefully help in that sense, disperse some of the rigid stereotypes around autistic people, that's me. Fabulous, thank you, Sarah. Um, so I'm gonna talk in a little bit more detail about the specific program that myself, Sue, Sarah and Otis have all been working on with a number of other people. So this is Art Spaces. Um, it's currently being prototyped. Um, basically, it's a website where autistic people can share experiences of their daily lives. And those experiences will then be used to understand more about sensory processing differences. So around 90%, depending on the study of autistic people, have sensory processing differences. And it's sometimes been used as a criteria of diagnosing autism, although that fluctuates. Um, there's lots of lab-based studies into this, but there's very little around how this actually affects autistic people and impacts on their lives. Um, so the idea is to use this data set to pull out some common themes, but also get a sense of the diversity and the individual, like the granularity of those range of experiences and use those to make environments more accessible to autistic people. Um, for example, by changing public policy, modifying environments. Um, one thing I did want to call your attention to in particular about this platform is that it uses a fine grained consent model. So um, every single user can choose who they share their experience with and for what purpose, whether it's for research or published on the platform or both. And it's a dynamic consent model as well. Um, so they will be able to withdraw their data when, whenever they want, um, put it back as many times as they like. And also there's a moderation process that is being developed along with this platform with autistic citizen science scientists. So instead of these things being imposed on autistic people by researchers, this is really coming from the autistic population because they know the most about their own experiences. Um, this looks a very busy slide, but it's, I think um, for me, this is a lot of the, the whole range of possibilities that participatory citizen science can offer. Um, so one of the things that I did in the last OLS cohort, because I did cohort two, and I can see Katharina is here actually as well, who's also been working with me on the project. So I um, hope you're enjoying OLS. I learned loads from it. Um, this is the kind of mapping exercise that I did and trying to work out what all of the skills and resources that were needed for the platform were. And it was important that autistic people were involved in every single aspect, as well as every part of the research stage. So you can see that this kind of circle here um, with the yellow, it's autistic people have been involved in literally every part of this from hypothesizing, designing the experiment, processing data, drawing conclusions and so on. Um, also, as well as lived experience, of course, autistic people are people, they're individuals with their own unique skill sets. So a huge amount of how the project is being designed um, is around those unique skill sets you can see here. Um, there is a whole range of people being matched to skills, including platform development. Um, we're entirely open source. Uh, the protocols actually are all published in our repository um, and is available for reuse. Um, we're linked into the Turing Way and amongst other things. Um, so you're welcome to join if you're interested, anyone can come along. Um, you can see here that actually open source and open research can work with people who are not as familiar with GitHub, but are interested in the project. So these are two examples of working with community members who are citizen scientists to design aspects of the project. The first one is guidance on looking through data and understanding what you might want to remove or what you might think about when you're deciding whether you want something to be published or not. When I wrote it, it was these really academic jargony paragraphs. And this is um, a collaborator called James Scott, who just broke it down into these really beautiful, extremely simple point by point steps. And on the other side, you see something that I was working on with Sue, who I'm going to pass over to in a moment. Um, this is a color coded version of tasks that people can do on GitHub 
from easy to difficult. So the green is you may not have that much experience, the red is you have to be pretty advanced. And those are now the labeling system for all of the issues on GitHub are now based on Sue's design um, to make it more accessible for autistic people. Um, so now I'm gonna pass over to Sue and she will talk about her experience for a little bit. And then after that, I will pass over to Otis. So over to you, Sue. Hi, I'm um, Sue EY and uh, I turned 67 on Monday. And I'm of an age where I remember non-digital engagement of any kind and scientists were scientists and people were people and never the twain should meet. So I, I, being involved in the focus groups and stuff, I can actually totally relate to what Sarah was talking about, the constellations, because my birth chart comes across as a splash chart. So I have a smattering of all sorts of different things, including um, creativity as a poet, the wordsmith. Um, I'm great at community engagement, proofreading, newsletters, that sort of stuff. So I was involved with the focus groups and I moved on to the point where we were developing the digital platform with alt spaces and found myself learning this different language and possibly Georgia and everyone learning about my accessibility language where I'm reiterating things from my both my autistic community and my work with my local borough council, London Borough of Hammersmith and Fulham. So, you know, doing the stuff, the labels was, was great, but also having the meetups every fortnight where we invite anyone who's worked on it with us so far and then new people to collaborate with us. We purposize it once a fortnight. So I um, expanded my Twitter account exponentially. Um, I'm using my poetry and everything to try and hook people in. So some of the people I'm working with in the alt space meetups are, are other scientists working both um, at university level and um, new people. So we we supportive of everybody's ability to be inclusive and accessibility is really important because if we don't make it accessible for the data input, then we've nothing to extract. And I'm actually in a new unique position. I'm working in the end game with my borough doing a new civic campus and public realm. So I'm putting into practice my influence on ambient environment. And when those buildings and public realm are up, I'll be able to feed in data from my experience navigating these environments to add to the platform. And it's that reiterative kind of approach of adding and building layers that will make our stuff, I think, profoundly um, groundbreaking. And I'm really grateful to be a part of it. And today, I actually, in a different event, I take part in a human library, which I can send a resource to someone. Uh, I was being read as, a, as an autistic book by someone from Publicis in their PR wing in Langland, and they do a lot of clinical trials with autism. So when I mentioned our work on art spaces, all the pens came out, everyone started writing stuff down. So I'm looking forward to maybe seeing some of, of, of Publicis and Langland, perhaps joining in in the future. So thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Wonderful, thank you so much, Sue. Sue has been absolutely amazing. Um, and so has Otis, who has been part of the project from the very start. So I'm gonna hand over to him now. Um, and just to let you all know, everybody is welcome to join the meetup sessions that Sue was talking about to find out fourth Thursday um, of every month from 12.30 to 2.30 um, GMT. So, uh, yeah, it's an open invite. Over to you, Otis. Hello, good evening to all of you. Hello, my name is Otis Smith. I'm part of the Citizen Science Project. I'm one of the many contributors a part of this project. I myself have been autistic since the age of 15. What led me to be part of the project was the opportunity and potential to try and create a space for autistic people that works, appeals and benefits to all, as well as broadening, expanding the project further and planting new skills, tools and resources, thinking of different ways and strategies to make the platform authentic, accessible, engaging and interactive as possible. Being a part of the Citizen Science Project has given me a complete whole new meaning, outlook and purpose to improve and be better. What I enjoy about being included in the Citizen Science Project is that everyone has their own take and contribution, no matter how big or small. Each day comes with its own challenges, as well as discoveries that will implement and utilize to our core strengths and values whilst using several but effective techniques and expertise. I'm having the opportunity to meet and work alongside others, to discuss agendas, to sharing new and effective ideas. 
it's been such a privilege to be part of this project. It's changed at times, challenged my thoughts and own perceptions, reassessing and re-evaluating different topics and strategies. It's been eye-opening and fulfilling at the same time. The Citizen Science Project displays such depth and true character and representation of the aims and does not look at things in an unrealistic approach. The group goes far and beyond to ensure that the work we put in can have such a positive impact and make a difference. The reward for me is knowing that the work we have contributed can hopefully expand and help towards not just a few, but the many. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you, Otis. Um, thank you also to all of these wonderful people, especially Kirsty Whitaker, who is the PI of the project, and it's basically her vision, and Nelda, who was my mentor in the last OLS. Um, all of the autistic community collaborators and open source contributors and lots of people here as well have actually helped. So Katharina, Malvika, Yo has helped. So basically, thank you everyone. And here are some different ways of joining in the project if you're curious.